So I brought up earlier terrorism, for example. What it means now that we are living in a planetary community that is being held hostage by terrorism in a way that has never existed before. And that we are also a, 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 a species that spends most of its resources trying to figure out how to destroy itself. Both medically, pharmaceutically, and in weapons. And that this is what we do with ourselves. This is what we do with ourselves. And that this is where, and a, and a lot of our video games are about killing ourselves and killing our own species. That killing is an entertaining pastime. It is a pharmaceutical pastime. Tranquilizing ourselves instead of being conscious. And that it is part of the um, investment of our capital in the military industrial complex. By the way, this is, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to get you riled up for politics at all. I am telling you the way it is. This is how we invest our energy. This is how, and it's the normal way. This is normal for us. We've adapted to this. And we actually, now here's a tribal belief. We believe that if we don't do this, we won't survive. Instead of getting that we won't survive because we do this. This is how morphed we are. We don't get that this is why we won't survive. We believe we won't survive unless we do this. Okay, so when you see the power of insanity, this is how insane we've become. Now, what this has... At a psychic level, at this, this level that has opened up, this collective level, it has, your, our collective psyche has a type of immune system, has a type of, um, this is our archetypal structure. Let's start there. This is our archety archetypal, archetype world. One of the ways you can measure the health of what's happening is when you see the changing patterns and archetypes, and this is how you can chart what's going on in the collective, is how you read the archetypal patterns and what is actively happening. So I'm going to hit a pause button here. And I'm going to say that when I was, how significant this is for yourself, for your life, for the way you understand. When you're on the first floor, you're going to take everything literally. You'll take everything someone says literally. You will interpret everything literally. You will think you're the center of the universe. Because that's the quality of consciousness on the first floor of the house. You will think you are in charge of everything. Because you, you have no other way to look at it. You won't understand that everything that happens is a symbolic, is the result of an energetic pattern that in the, in, the, in the 10th, 9th, that has manifested into a physical action. You won't get that. You have to, you know, when I, when I was in, and when I was learning medical intuition, I started out, this stress causes this. But what are the emotional stresses? Eventually, I saw and this is where I'm going. Eventually I saw, the first time I did a reading, I thought Norm had a pirate in his office. And I, I, and I, and I, I saw an image when I did a reading of a woman with a, a low-cut dress and a, 
sort of like a knife at her side and a long skirt. And I did not realize I was looking at an archetypal pattern. It, and it just, it blinks like this. It's that fast with me. I thought this was actually how she was dressed. And I said, wow, Norm, what did people say when she walked in your, <laughs> when she walked in your, your clinic? And he said, nothing, why? And I said, wow, she looks, you got a pirate there. And you know, anyway. <laughs> it turned out she had pirate tendencies. Anyway, after that, it was patterns in us that had more power than, it was our patterns that then held the control and influence over why we do what we do. I'm going to talk about that continuing. As I st it took 20 years of my life in sacred contracts. As I st looked at what are our patterns? What are our patterns? They were the most fascinating study of them all to me was patterns. But even eventually patterns did not teach me what about healing? Patterns were not enough to figure out why we, we could heal or why we couldn't heal. Nevertheless, when I studied the patterns of the cosmos, what I learned, and what I still do, is that um, archetypal patterns in our cosmos follow what they're, how they're shifting, and it tells you how the evolution of what's happening to us is shifting. For example, traditionally, the vampire has been a demonic archetype. In the vampire, the vampire is an archetype that has to be invited over a threshold. It bites your fifth chakra, and it sucks, this is willpower, it sucks the life out. And you become where your body becomes immortal if it continues to take the willpower of other people. It is an archetype that has traditionally horrified people. Over the course of the last 15 years, that archetype, which again is associated with immortality, has shifted places with the archetype of the priest. The priest is seen as the demonic archetype now. That when you see the priest, it is the sign of a demon. And the vampire is seen as the archetype of something romantic, something you want to be with, something that's enchanting, charming, and if you listen to some of these archetypal characters that are on television that are vampires, they are made out to be absolutely romantic. I want to be with you, bite my neck, and I'm like, holy Christ. <laughs> and the very thought of someone going to a priest, are you kidding me? They put up a cross at the very thought of going anywhere near a priest. Now that is the handiwork of darkness.